Now, once we have seen while loop, it's time to move towards a do while loop. In fact, before we proceed, first of all, I want to remove this uh, breakpoint because we don't, don't want to debug anymore. And I want to remove the inner loop because we want to focus only on the outer loop now. Now, using this loop, uh, we were printing high uh, four times and then we are printing by as well. Let me also remove by for now. And with this, I just want to run this code once again to see what happens. Compile, run, and you can see we got the same output, right? Okay, now what I want to do is, uh, when you talk about while, wh what happens is, when you talk about this line, which is line number seven, it will assign the value of i as one. When it go for the next line, which is line number nine here, it will check for the condition. If it is true, it will execute this block. That means, if this condition is true, then it will execute. Otherwise, if this condition is false, it will not execute the block. That actually makes sense, right? That's, that's how the loop should work. But there are some certain situation where you want to execute this block, even if your condition is false, at least once. I mean, you want to run this at least once. Maybe something like uh, you want to send a message to your friend and if the service is not available from your friend's end, at least you should be able to send the message once at least. Okay, so that you can get the reply, uh, the user is not available or something like that. So what I want to do is I want to execute this block at least once, even if the condition is false. Now when I say condition is false, what it means is example if the value of i is five. Now when you make the value of i as five, and if you run this code, you can see we'll not get any output. It's because the condition is false. So what we can do is, can we just cut this part from here and put it after the block? We can do this. And we can just also give a semicolon here uh, because that's how you end this statement. Normally when you write a while at the start, the curly brackets becomes a statement. But then if you write while after the block, we have to end it first with a semicolon. And we have to add one more, which is do. So we have to say do while. Now what it does is, it will execute the block at least once, even if your condition is false. Now if you can see in this situation, first of all, let me just go with one again, and let's see what happens if you run this code. Compile, run, you can see we got the normal output. And this the same output we got when we had a normal while loop as well. But here, if you make this condition false, I mean, if you say i is five now, which is a false, con which will give you false here. But if you run this code or compile this code and run, you can see at least you will get the output once. This is important. So if you want to get the output even once for, uh, even if your condition is false, you will be using do while. So yeah, that's the main difference between while and do while. Uh, otherwise it works in the same way. It executes, uh, check for the condition, again executes, check for the condition and, list, and the flow go on. So that's it from this video. In the next video, we'll explore for loop.